Welcome to News Now from the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Mike Crowley, and Lisa Gibilario of the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network is joining us today. Lisa is also coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition, and today we're talking about a parent survey on youth substance misuse that was recently conducted by the Belmont Wellness Coalition. So Lisa, tell us about the recent parent survey that the, the Belmont Wellness Coalition administered. Sure, Mike, thank you. Um, so we decided that having spent a year basically steeped in the youth risk behavior survey, which of course is a survey of students in Belmont, uh, grade seven through 12, and we really were, were dealing with that data, but we thought it was time to get some data from the parents of these youth to see what they were thinking about substance misuse, what they were concerned about, as well as what they were concerned about with regard to mental health. So we surveyed parents in early March, um, and again, to understand what they were thinking about, concerned about, why they thought their kids or any kids might be uh, tempted by substances. And we got almost 300 responses, Mike, of parents um, of youth, again, in middle school and the high school. So we were really thrilled with the response rate. Okay. Well, so Lisa, the survey asked parents their thoughts about youth substance misuse. And, and I'm curious, what did the results tell us? Uh, overwhelmingly, uh, the re results revealed that parents believe peer pressure to be the number one reason that students are engaging in substance misuse. So we thought that was interesting. Um, stress was the second reason, followed by lack of adult supervision, which we know to be a problem in Belmont um, from certain data we get from the police department, um, a fair number of, of families in Belmont have second homes. And of course they, you know, utilize those second homes and a byproduct of that can be that kids are left unsupervised. But um, that was the third reason. Again, peer pressure was believed to be the number one reason. So what have we learned, Lisa, about how often parents are talking with their, their kids about substances? Um, so we asked that question and we asked about alcohol as well as marijuana, uh, vaping, vaping of nicotine, um, and misusing prescription drugs. And what we found out that the responses were often, sometimes, seldom, or never talking about these substances with my kids. And I would say that sometimes was the overwhelming response to all of the substances. However, I would say if you look at the responses across the board, we learned that prescription drug um, misuse is the least discussed by parents with their kids. Um, however, the vaping of nicotine, the, you know, using weed and drinking alcohol were all about the same. And again, all in the sometimes range, um, followed though by often, often was the next highest response. So we were buoyed by that because it, it looked as though parents were engaging in conversations. So that's good news. All right, then. So let me ask, um, let me ask about um, the mental health aspect of, of the survey, because uh, the survey uh, did attempt to address that as well. What did we learn about um, the, the mental health of our, um, of our middle schoolers and high schoolers? Yeah, Mike, so this was surprising. Um, we asked, what are you most concerned about with regard to youth mental health? Um, now, based on those youth risk behavior survey follow-up presentations that we did for about four months from November through March, maybe longer, um, we were hearing a lot from parents about suicidal ideation um, because the self-harm uh, aspect had increased as well mm -hmm. as kids thinking about suicide, having a suicide plan. However, what this survey revealed was that the number one concern, mental health concern of parents was anxiety, followed by depression, followed by overwhelming stress. But anxiety got by far uh, well over 200 um, responses as the number one concern. Suicidal ideation and self-harm were much further down getting maybe 33, 34 responses. So that was a surprise because when, as I said, when we talked with parents in the middle school and high school, 
based on the YRBS data, we would have thought that the suicidal ideation would be higher, but it wasn't. Um, anything else, Lisa? Yes, I thought it was interesting, Mike, to note that we asked parents um, a question that pertained specifically to the work of the Belmont Wellness Coalition, which was, as we plan our educational workshops, what topics would you find most helpful? And um, the number one response was strategies to support stressed teens. So we thought that that was interesting, given that stress was number three in, in mental health, but number one in educational workshops. But it was followed by recognizing the signs of youth mental health issues. So we will, you know, we're, we're happy to roll up our sleeves and uh, get back to parents in the fall and offer a workshop on strategies to support teens. And important to note that when we share those strategies, they are from teens themselves. We've also asked teens what will what's the most supportive thing your your parents and caregivers can do to support you and we've got their responses so we'll be sharing that this fall and uh we just did a big workshop on understanding youth mental health at, at the high school in may and we're happy to revisit that topic in the fall all right lisa thank you so much for walking us through the survey and we will continue talking about this and other issues and we'll see you next time thank you